Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. And Spain's current housing boom, according to the press, has no limits. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a beer or a coffee. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your continuing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, the housing boom that Spain currently has has no limits. And as we can see here, prices will rise by up to 10% and sales will grow to 750,000 transactions. Nobody expected that after the pandemic, there would be a fervor to buy houses like it had not happened in Spain for years. The market soon recovered its pace after the lull of the confinement, but the best came months after, in April 2021, when the recovery turned into a boom. The inertia has been maintained until the first quarter of 2022, and not even Russia's invasion of Ukraine seems to be slowing down the euphoria. If the war does not drag on, interest rates do not go above 1% in the second half of the year, and Europe continues to buy gas from Russia, 2022 will be a magnificent year for the real estate sector, says Gonzalo Bernardos, professor of economics and director of the real estate master's degree at the University of Barcelona. So there we go. According to that expert, the housing boom has no ceiling. And if everything goes according to plan, which may or may not happen, 2022 is going to be a magnificent year. Now, tech guru Elon Musk has been busy on Twitter and he has Spain in his sights. And as we can see here, Musk tells Spain to invest in solar and Premier invites him over. Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez invited Elon Musk to visit his country after the world's richest man tweeted that it could power all of Europe with solar energy. Musk should come and see that Spain is already investing heavily in solar, Sánchez tweeted on Tuesday in response to earlier posts from the billionaire entrepreneur. We welcome investors in Spain, said Sánchez. In a subsequent tweet, Musk acknowledged that Portugal could also develop large-scale solar projects. Renewable energy firms were among the biggest gainers on the Spanish stock exchange on Tuesday following Musk's comments. So Elon Musk seeing potential in Spain when it comes to solar energy. And we'll see if he takes up Pedro Sanchez's offer to visit the country. Now we saw last Monday that the transport workers strike here in Spain that has been affecting the country for the last three weeks has been suspended. And let's hope it stays that way because some of the workers involved in the strike were very disruptive indeed. And as we can see here, the transport strike leaves a total of 86 people arrested, 155 investigated, and 561 complaints made under the gag law. On Tuesday, the Ministry of the Interior held the last meeting of the Coordination Committee for the Haulier Strike, which has left a final balance of 86 detainees, 155 people investigated, and 561 complaints processed in application of the Law on Citizen Security, known by its detractors as the gag law. In addition, 919 drivers were fined for traffic offences, and 11,852 convoys of lorries were given protection. In these 20 days, according to the Interior Ministry, 86 arrests have been made for perpetrating violent acts, 58 of them by the Guardia Civil, 27 by the National Police, and one more arrest by the Mossos de Esquadra. In addition, another 155 people are being investigated for their possible involvement in similar acts. So police were working overtime here in Spain to control those striking workers. Now the Spanish government continues to seize Russian assets, and the other day it seized the $90 million yacht of Russian oligarch after US request. Spanish authorities have seized the $90 million yacht belonging to Russian oligarch Victor Vexelberg following a request from the US in a sign of growing transatlantic cooperation on sanctions enforcement related to the war in Ukraine. The US Department of Justice on Monday announced Spain's seizure of the Tango, a 255-foot luxury vessel currently on the island of Mallorca, saying the move was triggered by the work of the Special Interagency Task Force set up since the invasion of Ukraine to implement sanctions on Russian individuals and businesses. Today marks our task force's first seizure of an asset belonging to a sanctioned individual with close ties to the Russian regime. It will not be the last, said Merrick Garland, the US Attorney General. So Spain working hard to get into the United States good books by seizing Russian assets here. Now, Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has set up a meeting with his new best friend, the King of Morocco, and he will travel to Morocco on Thursday to meet with Mohammed VI. 
President of the Government, Pedro Sanchez, will travel to Morocco this Thursday to meet with King Mohammed VI with a view of settling the diplomatic crisis between the two countries and marking the beginning of a new stage in the bilateral relationship, according to the Foreign Minister José Manuel Albares. Sanchez will be accompanied by Albares, who cancelled the visit he was to make to Rabat last Friday to prepare for the President's trip following the telephone call between him and the monarch. Mohammed VI invited Sanchez to travel in the coming days to Morocco and conveyed his high appreciation for the support of the Moroccan Autonomy Plan for Western Sahara. So Sanchez travelling to Morocco tomorrow to try to put an end to the diplomatic crisis that has been affecting the two countries for the last few years. Now we all know that inflation is currently a huge problem here in Spain and as a result the shopping trolley is now 500 euros more expensive per household per year. The Organization of Consumers and Users has stated that there will be an increase in spending on some food and household products of more than 500 euros a year in an average family due to the rise in food prices. The OCU Price Observatory covers the evolution of 156 products including fresh products such as fruit, vegetables, vegetables, meat and fish, as well as packaged food, drugstore and hygiene products, and including both manufacturers' brands and private labels in nine national supermarket chains. The prices of 84% of the products have risen, compared to only 16% which have fallen. So consumers here in Spain getting smashed in all directions when they go to the supermarket. Now an update on Spain's biggest tourist resort, Benidorm, and it is that British tourists outnumber Spaniards in Benidorm after two years of the pandemic. British tourists outnumber Spanish tourists in Benidorm for the first time in two years since the pandemic, according to data from the Hotel Employers Association, Hosbeck, which represents an advance in the tourist recovery, which is reaching maximum figures in practically all destinations since the pandemic began and after overcoming the sixth wave. This is good news for the hotel sector, which is confident of good forecasts for Easter if it is accompanied by drier and sunnier spring weather. Last week, Benidorm reached an average hotel occupancy rate of 68.9%, 2.4 percentage points higher than the previous week. So the Brits are back in Benidorm and outnumbering Spaniards there for the first time in two years. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Alan, only came across your videos a couple of weeks ago as you popped up on my phone. Saying that, I really enjoy them. Thanks. Yeah, Alan, thanks for the comment. Glad you liked the videos and welcome to the community. And isn't it amazing how technology and social media works with one of my videos popping up on your phone? One here from ZE, another fantastic episode, Stu. Ranking, car, studio, outside. Yeah, ZE, thanks for the comment and obviously referring to another comment that we saw the other day from somebody asking why I don't film more outside. The main reason that I don't film more outside, as I said the other day, is that there's too many factors that can influence the quality of the video. For example, if it's too windy, you get bad sound. If it's sunny and cloudy at the same time, you can mess up the image quality. And another problem here in Spain is that you can't film people out in the street because of the country's very strict data protection laws. So if somebody appears in one of my videos accidentally because they're walking in the background and they didn't want to appear in the video, they can ask me to take the video down. So that's one of the many problems with filming outside here in Spain. On here from Kyrie Rose, Stu, I'm looking to move to Spain in the next year in hopes of having a better quality of life. Do you have any advice for people like me? Yeah, Kyrie Rose, thanks for the comment and good to see that you are planning a move to Spain next year in order to improve your quality of life. And do I have any advice for people like you? Well, all I'll say is make sure you choose the place you're going to live wisely. Probably a good idea to spend as much time as possible in that place before you move here permanently so that you get a feel for it. Probably the most important piece of advice I could give is learn the local language if you haven't done so already. One here from Clive. Hi Stu, no problem getting petrol with 20 cents off from local Repsol station today. Also, local supermarkets still have full shelves. We do live near a village in the Malaga Mountains though. Maybe different in the larger towns and in the cities. Finally managed to get the swimming pool clean after the recent Kalima downpour. Yeah Clive, thanks for the comment and good to see that you've got the pool clean and ready for the summer. Let's hope there isn't another Kalima though. And when it comes to that 20 cent per litre fuel rebate here in Spain, I imagine that most service stations around the country now have it in place. A few service stations, as we know, had teething problems last weekend, but hopefully they have managed to get them sorted out and the fuel discount is up and running. One here from Wendy, en hora buena Carlos, que chico y jugador. Yeah Wendy, thanks for the comment and obviously referring to Spain's latest tennis sensation, Carlos Alcaraz, 
who recently won a major tournament in Miami. And according to many people in this country, he's going to be as good as, if not better, than Rafa Nadal. So he's got some very, very big shoes to fill indeed. One here from YY, how is the weather? I have seen several videos showing snow and sunny beaches with people walking in t-shirts. Do not know what to believe. Thank you. Yeah, why, why, thanks for the comment. And it's a bit of a mixed bag as far as the weather is concerned here in Spain at the moment. Many places in the north of the country have been under snow, while some places in the south of the country have had decent weather. But the Spanish have a fantastic expression to sum up the weather at this time of the year. And it goes like this. Hasta el 40 de mayo, no te quites el sayo. And basically it means that you should be prepared for bad weather here in Spain until around the 9th of June. And finally one here from Paul. Can't wait, Stuart. Next Friday flying back to Rojales. Awaiting us is two days of cleaning. Yeah, Paul, thanks for the comment and glad that you're finally able to get back to Spain. But unfortunately, as you said, there's going to be a bit of cleaning up to do because the weather sure has been strange these last six weeks. Saharan sandstorms that cover the country in red dust, heavy rains that cause flooding in many areas, and I think for this weekend we're going to get gale force winds. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.